In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew a pin cushion. So you're going to need two pieces of fabric. And the reason why I have one bigger than the other right now is because I am going to paint my own design onto this piece of fabric. This piece of fabric is a ready to dye piece of fabric. So it has no starches or anything. And I'm going to be using my fabric paints in order to paint a design on here. So my top piece of fabric for my pin cushion is going to be 7 inches by 7 inches. I'm basically going to find the centre of my pin cushion by folding it in half and folding it off again and then pinching that corner. So when I create my design, it is going to be in the middle, middle of this pin cushion. This pin cushion is not going to be 7 inches by 7 inches. My finished size is going to be this one. So currently this finished size is 5 inches by 5 inches and obviously it's going to reduce when we sew this up. So when I create my design on my 7 inch by 7 inch front piece for my pin cushion, I don't want to take up the full design because my finished size is only going to be 5 by 5. The reason why it's 7 by 7 is because I want to do some free motion quilting and to move this piece of fabric about is going to be easier using the 7 by 7 rather than the 5 by 5. So we also are going to need a piece of a batten and I would also suggest that you do that 7x7 seven seven to match the top of the pin cushion. This is a great scrap fabric for any of these pieces of batten that you have left over from your quilting projects and these pin cushions make perfect little gifts. So all I'm going to do is place this on top here and I will cut around this piece of batten 7x7. Seven so we don't need this piece of batting quite just yet, so I'm going to put this to one side while we get our design onto the front of our pin cushion. If you struggle with creating any designs, don't worry because you can pick up these pens called friction pens and basically you can create any design that you want and if you don't like what you have just done, you can apply heat and it will disappear. I'll just have to get my pressing mat over here and we can make that disappear. So there you go, there was two yellow lines and now the two yellow lines are gone. So this is a perfect way of creating a design onto a piece of fabric if you are not very good at drawing and you can keep it raising to your heart's content. Oh, and by the way, I am not sponsored or paid by anybody in order to create this video. And because I am using my fabric paints, I am going to use this particular pen and it will erase with paint. If anybody knows why cats like to be more loving while you're trying to get your work done, let me know in the comments down below. She has rested right on my light box. This is the design we are going to be working with and this is the fabric paint that I am going to be using for this particular design. So I am going to start colouring in all of these sections. So I'm going to do yellow for the top of the cornflower. And if that marker doesn't actually disappear in the time that we are going to do the next part, I'm not going to worry about it because I am going to be doing some free motion quilting around this design anyway. It appears to be moving. So then I am going to, Sophie was trying to play, she's, she's still there, she's off camera right now. And I'm going to come in with the pink. And I'm just going to colour. This is just a perfect, great way of coming up with your own designs and doing it so much more personalised, especially if you're giving this pincushion as a gift. And it really is. It's quite quick. You will have to heat set these designs after we have created them. And... All the instructions are actually on the side of the pen of what to do. So I have two different styles of fabric paint pens here. I have one that is like 
this kind of nib and the yellow one was kind of like more like a, a marker this is more like a paint so I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna finish this off here and then we will let it dry and we'll come in and do some free motion quilting on our pin cushion and it will really set it set it off so this is the finished drawing and as you can see some of the pink has bled into yellow but i actually quite like it it's given it kind of like a little bit of a twist there rather than just the yellow and the pink so we're going to let that dry and then we're going to heat set it and then we're going to do some free motion quilting around this flower if you're thinking it really doesn't look that much right now i would totally agree with you just wait and see what happens next so basically i have my batting and i have the front of my pin cushion and we're going to put them together like so and now we are going to do some free motion quilting on the top of our pin cushion I am not paid nor sponsored to create this video i do my work on my baby lock soprano in my top of my bod bin i am going to use this thread it is a glide thread and it is an embroidery thread and i love using this in my bobbin thread i'm going to be using a black thread and i'm also going to be changing this foot to a free motion quilting foot I like to use this foot as I like to see where I am going and then I will also be dropping these feed dogs and you drop the feed dogs by moving this table from the back and at the back of your machine there is a switch that you move back and there you go my feed dogs have dropped down. I am not going to be showing you the stitch settings because you moved the fabric about, you are now the feed dogs and you are now in control of the needle going up and down. Now I will say this until I am blue in the face. If you want to learn how to free motion quilt, I would recommend that you start with something like this. This will give you all the confidence in the world at learning how to free motion stitch without the stress of it. You will literally just follow the outline of any pattern that you create and free motion quilt around it. I find it is less stressful than trying to do a, a design on your quilt. Try with something like this first. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and do some free motion quilting. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this design a few times because I like that really scribbly look. Now if this stitch here, if this thread here is going to get in your way, just trim him away. And don't try to be so perfect about going around. It looks so much better when it's all just like free flowing. So don't try to make it perfect. And you can always move the fabric whenever you want to move the fabric. If you're getting big eyelashes when you're going around the corner, it just means that you're going around the corner too quickly and then you just need to slow down, that's all. Mm -hmm. 
and whenever I stop I want to come to a complete stop because I always find that my needle goes up and down like one more time so I always make sure that I stop and make sure that the needle has completely stopped going up and down and then I'll move back again the great thing about this design is that you can travel back over your existing stitches And I'm going to come in and fill in this step. just so forgiving and if you want to come back and do the veins of the leaf you can do Have you seen the difference of how this looks now with the free motion quilting done? Like I said, it is such a stress-free way of doing free motion quilting. I would highly recommend that you do this. From here, we are now going to create the pin cushion. So I'm going to get the backing of my fabric. I am going to place it on the top of my design and I'm going to cut the excess of the fabric that we don't need anymore. If you would like to hang up your pin cushion, I would recommend just getting a piece of ribbon and we're just going to fold it in half and make it as long or as short as you would like it to be. I cut mine about four inches long. You are going to place your fabrics of your pin cushion right sides together. And what do I mean by that is the design is going to be on like facing each other so if you did have a design on your fabric the design is going to be on this side design is going to be this side and it's going to be right sides together so the only thing that you're going to see is the batting and the back of your fabric and if you do have a piece of ribbon you are going to fold it over in half like so and you are going to have the raw edges of this ribbon sticking out of the raw edges of your pin cushion and I would recommend just leaving a little bit of a tail and folding that back over so you've basically got these the two end bits flicking out there and I would just recommend just either pinning or I like to use these wonder clips so basically we are going to clip all the way around our pin cushion to keep all of our sections into place. Before we forget, we are going to raise our feed dogs back up by going behind the machine again and moving that switch. I am also going to change back to my regular foot and on my Bay Block Soprano, it is the J foot. I am also going to change the thread in the top thread and the bobbin thread to a white. As soon as you start sewing, these feed dogs will pop back up, so don't worry about that. Now what you're going to do is you are going to sew around this pin cushion. However, you are going to leave a gap somewhere. And I would recommend it somewhere in the middle. Don't ever finish on, like, leave a gap in the corner because it's hard to get that nice like sewn down corner so always make sure that you sew around your corners and any gaps that you require always leave it in the center of your pincushion work so if you're sewing a pincushion always leave it in the center so whatever you need to do to remind yourself not to sew all the way around do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start around about here around about one and a half inches away from my corner and I'm going to go all the way around. Now when you start sewing don't forget to reverse over your stitches to lock them stitches in. So I'm going to go forward and I'm going to reverse 
and I'm going to go forward again. Now, when I come to the corner here, my presser fit automatically raises up. And this is because on the Baby Black Soprano, we have a pivot key, which allows this to drop and raise every time we press on the foot accelerator. It's an absolutely awesome feature of this machine. And then I can just glide, I can turn this all the way around without having to go to the back of the machine, raising and dropping an accelerator foot. So just watch as I press the accelerator again. And then it raises up again, it's brilliant, I love it. As you can see, I have gone all the way around here, so I've sewn this little bit up, and then I have got this section where I haven't sewn. This is what we have so far, and I don't like all of this excess here, so I am going to trim this up. You can do this with a pair of scissors, you can do it with your rotary cutter, it is up to you. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to tidy all of this up. Now remember we have this opening and in this opening we are going to turn our pin cushion right side out. It'll come through. You just need to remember to leave like a big enough opening in order to push your pin cushion right side out. You will probably need to press this all down because it will be a little bit wrinkly and you may need to just get like a chopstick or something and just poke these corners out so they look nice and turned out. So we are just missing one thing right now. You are going to get some polyfill and you are just going to stuff this. I won't stuff it too much just in order just because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stitch around the outside here closing this hole up so don't overfill i have got as much polyfill as i would like to put into this pin cushion so i'm now going to go around and i'm going to top stitch this all close if you have enjoyed this video please consider subscribing i have over 300 sewing and quilting tutorials on my channel right now thank you so much for watching please comment and like down below see you next time